The future of the species is finally unearthed. So the sequel to the 1982 Blade Runner starring Harrison Ford is finally here with Blade Runner 2049. My name is Brennan Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. Hey guys, thank you very much for tuning in to my opinion slash review for Blade Runner 2049 starring Harrison Ford and Ryan Gosling. I really do appreciate it, but before we get into the review, help me out. Go ahead and click that subscribe button, click the bell so you can be notified, and give me a thumbs up. Let's see if we can get this review to 100 likes. Now, Blade Runner, the first one came out in 1982. I am extremely late to the party. I just saw the movie for the first time this past Sunday, and I will talk about that in just a second. If you want my full review, I did post one on my channel, and there is a link to that review down in the description box down below. But all of my life, my child life, teen life, young adult life, and how old I am now, I've always heard movie fans from all over the land just rave about how great Blade Runner is and how great Harrison Ford was back in the day. This was directed by Ridley Scott and just to how it is a cinematic masterpiece and still holds up time today. I, I, I've heard that from everybody in the movie and film community, except for uh, John Campia, who uh, was doing Collider, but now he's kind of doing his own thing. He's like the only pundit or critic or whatever that I've seen uh, in recent years that's not hating on the film, just didn't love it as much as everybody else. And when I saw the Blade Runner, the first one, just this past Sunday, uh, I rented it on, on demand. I was, um, you know, as soon as the movie started, I was into it. You know, it was like a wide shot. You had like uh, fire flames flying through the air and you had this wonderful score. I didn't look to see who did the score back then, but after seeing the, the initial Blade Runner 2049 trailer and then seeing that movie and seeing them use the same music and score and whatnot, you know, it, it was just, you know, I was like, wow, you know, I kind of feel like I'm part of the family now. And even though I'm extremely late to the party, it was just something about, you know, that small aspect that I really did like. As far as the movie itself, I did enjoy it. I thought it was a great film, but I was not blown away like everyone else. People were saying, like, this is a masterpiece and the best movie ever made. Even though I did enjoy the movie, I didn't come remotely close to feeling that way and to be honest thought that at times that the movie was a little bit boring but you know hey that's not that anything is wrong with the film it just may not have been for me so going into Blade Runner 2049 pretty much the only difference is you know there was no Ryan Gosling back in the original 1982 version but now he's here in 2049 and all oh, the first one took place in the year 2019 and of course, we have Harrison Ford back. As far as the director is concerned, really, Scott did the first film, but now Dennis Villeneuve is doing uh, part two, 2049. And if you're familiar with his work, you know that he did Sicario, Enemy, Arrival, and uh, of course, now he's doing Blade Runner 2049. And, you know, uh, he gets better and better with each film. I really did. You know, Sicario was really good for me. Um, you know, it grows on me. I've seen it a few times now, and I liked it a little bit more each time. Um, Prisoners was like that was a masterpiece in my opinion and Arrival I really did like the first half of the movie the second half was good too but just wasn't as good as the first so going into this movie Blade Runner 2049 you know my expectations were you know I was excited but you know um, somewhat mediocre I, I was looking forward to seeing the film but I had no expectations that man I'm gonna be blown away I can't wait to see this this is gonna be like the best cinematic experience that I've ever had it's a far like if you if you uh, haven't seen the first one do you need to go in um, to Blade Runner 2049 having seen it I want to say no you don't but of course uh, this is pretty much common sense it will be much easier for you to understand what's going on if you see the first one and um, yeah so um, this movie comes in like right under three hours two hours and 49 minutes that is my first complaint of Blade Runner 2049 I didn't think that it would have to it should have been that long but I'm pretty sure there's a lot of other people out there that disagree with me and that's perfectly fine because all films are subjective but the first thing that I really did like about this film is just like I liked about the first one is the score the soundtrack and it was being done by Hans Zimmer and I'm pretty sure you know who that is and Benjamin Wallace and if I butchered your name Benjamin please forgive me but those are the two score um, um, the two co-composers on this movie and they did a fantastic job 
Um, I've never really bought or, you know, streamed a whole, um, well, no, I take that back. I was going to say I've never really bought or streamed the whole uh, soundtrack or score album, but I think I'm going to do that um, with Blade Runner 2049. And not only did I feel like I hear, uh, I heard a new material, I felt that I heard material from the old film, but it would just enhance more and added a few more, I don't know the term, sound effects or whatever, or sound bits just to enhance the sound and make it better and not, you know, like it's just a complete carbon copy from what came before. But, you know, there are still some of the same songs as I believe and I really did like that uh, Chris, not Christopher Nolan um, um, Hans Zimmer is a composer that's been around for a long time he's one of the best in the business to me not the best but one of the best you know top three top five whatever and he's pretty much composed every film that Christopher Nolan has done before and he's just phenomenal um, as well Benjamin Wallace he has done a few Christopher Nolan films and he also did Batman v Superman for Warner Brothers and DC Comics what was that two years ago but they did a fantastic job on the um, on the score um, it was just you know really you know um, just had a real strong presence and was bold and, you know, was, um, spoke up for the film a lot, even during this, you know, quieter or even more uh, small, boring times that the film did have, which I'll touch on here in a second. Um, as far as the characters are concerned, uh, Ryan Gosling does great as well as Harrison Ford. Jared Leto. Um, I guess you can consider him the villain or the antagonist. And it's kind of hard to talk about this move without spoiling it. And I'll touch on that in a minute. But, you know, Jerry Leto's performance in this thing was the best that I've seen in quite some time. Not only not, his performance in this movie was not just the best in this movie, but like I was afraid of him. I was like, man, this dude is sick. He's crazy. He's deranged. There is something wrong with him. He doesn't sympathize with anybody. He doesn't empathize with anybody. And I could kind of understand that given the type of line of work he's in. But still, that doesn't take away on how great of a job he really did. You know, and I, I really, you know, he only had two scenes in this movie and but they were great. Uh, I won't say if they were long or short, but they were great. And, um, you know, I, I think that, the you know, you should go see this movie just because of him. You know, if you're already a fan of the Blade Runner franchise and, you know, he just did a great job um, before this. You know, I didn't see an early screening for this. I saw this Thursday night, um, been very busy this week, but there was word on the street that the director, Dennis Villeneuve, wanted everyone to talk about this movie without talking about the plot too much and i completely understand why because especially if you see the first film as soon as you get to certain points in this film you realize that if you try to talk about it that it will be a spoiler because the plot of the film is a spoiler in itself and i'll just say that you know there's a secret in this society and it needs to be uncovered and you know solved and you know there's a mystery and if they don't you know solve the mystery or solve the puzzle or whatever you know society will come crashing down and I like that idea for a plot or whatever. I mean, it's something that everyone can relate to because no matter what your style of life is, you do live in a society for the most part that um, you share with other people. And there has to be some type of balance in that system. And if there is not a balance, it will continue to be chaos, chaos, chaos. And that is exactly what they're trying to rid of in this film. And like I said, it's really hard to talk about without spoiling it. But I will say this. If you did love Blade Runner, the 1982 version directed by Ridley Scott, you're going to love Blade Runner 2049 even more. I mean, this is a perfect sequel. Uh, it takes everything that the f uh, first film did great and multiplies it times four. I mean, it has the visuals, it has the cinematography, it has the score, it has the acting, and it also, uh, I mean, it just has everything. It has that technology. And it really, comparing the first film to the second film, they, they even though they're like 30 years apart or 33 years apart, I, I don't feel like doing math right now, they really feel like the same film, even though it is a big jump in technology and whatnot in the cinematography, it still feels like it's the same film. And that's just, you know, a good editing, a good film making by Dennis Villeneuve. I mean, seriously, I was in the theater and if you go to the theater to see it, you know, I recommend that you see this on the largest screen possible with the loudest speakers. It'll just enhance the experience for you. But I really did feel like this was the same universe. I mean, I really felt like they used some of the same sets and they didn't. I know they didn't, but it just really felt that way. And even though they're 30 something years apart, you know, you can easily watch part one and part two back to back and, you know, you'll have a good old time. Now, as far as I'm concerned, 
did I just love this movie? Did I think it was a masterpiece? You know, uh, no, I did not. That doesn't mean that I did not like the movie, but my sentiments for Blade Runner 2049 are pretty much the same as they were for Blade Runner, the 1982 version. It is that I thought it was a great, a good film, a great film, but I just was not blown away. There were some boring parts that I felt that were in the original film, and there were some boring parts that I felt were in 2049. Um, I also will be honest with you towards the beginning of this film. There are a number of subtitles that you have to read. And I did miss the past two lines because I just wasn't able to read it for some reason. I don't have the best eyes, but I've never it's been a long time when I was in the theater where I wasn't able to read some of the subtitles. And I don't know if that's just, you know, bad editing or my bad eyes or a combination of both. But I kind of feel like that I missed out on some of the plot. I was following it for the most part. But there was a there was an instance or two to where I just didn't understand what was going on and why. And when they laid out a certain character's objective, I was like, well, if that's what you're trying to do, why don't you just do this instead? Again, that could have just been my misunderstanding. And I will not lie to you. During some of the boring parts, I did kind of doze off to sleep for a number of seconds or it could have been a few minutes. I think by the time I woke up, you know, went to sleep and woke up, it was during the same scene. I do apologize. You may consider that unprofessional, but I'm just being blatantly honest to you because to be honest with you, I don't really consider myself a film um, a film critic or a movie critic. I consider myself a regular guy that just likes movies that happen to like talking about it. So, you know, I mean, I'm just being honest with you. Still, the movie is great. Um, there are a lot of great things about it technically that I really do appreciate just being a film lover. And I think you will, too. Again, this movie may not be for everybody. If you love the first Blade Runner, you will love the second Blade Runner um, even more. And if you thought that, you know, you know, that it was good or OK, you're probably going to feel that way. Maybe hike your uh, maybe hike up your score just a little bit. Um, but, you know, you're going to if you you know liked it or thought it was good, you're probably going to feel the same way about Blade Runner 2049. Um, but, God, you know, but, um, you know, that's just how I feel. Um, you know, you may not feel that way, too. And that's perfectly fine because all films are subjective. But um, I really do think you should go see this movie. Um, there is a lot to talk about. If I had to rate Blade Runner 2049 out of a one out of 10, I would give it a seven out of 10. Yes, a seven out of 10. But guys, that's just my opinion. Have you seen Blade Runner 2049? Do you want to see it? Have I turned you on? Have I turned you off? Do you agree with me or do you disagree with me? Let me know in the comment section below. Let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing. And before I continue, I just also wanted to add in, there was a, a nice, decent little action scene towards the beginning of this movie starring Ryan Gosling and another character. I will not tell you what happened or who the other character was, but I really did like it. You know, it was it was nice loud and 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 um, heart pounding and uh, you know really did set the tone for the movie if you like this video go ahead and give me a thumbs up and if you didn't like the video that's fine just leave me a comment below why and still give me a thumbs up since you're watching this video on YouTube go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can get all the content that I have to provide you can click the bell so you can be notified when I do make uploads and you can also um, go to my website check me out there bookmark it and also guys look me up on social media i made it very easy for you guys by providing that in a link in the description box down below there's links it's also at the bottom of your screen so guys i just want to thank you again for tuning in to my opinion slash review of blade running 2049 starring ryan gosling and harrison ford directed by dennis Villeneuve. and before you go don't forget that my name is brennan keith avery and this is just my opinion Peace.